بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome back uh, Today we're gonna start a new chapter which is chapter 8 Now in chapter 8 we're gonna start the analysis we're gonna start to analyze the dynamic systems uh, We finished modeling we uh, now know how to model mechanical systems uh, electrical systems and electromechanical systems uh, in addition to uh, fluid systems these are these are the systems that we study so far right now we're going to start the analysis how to analyze the dynamic systems there are two types of analysis the first one which is in chapter 8 we're going to start with the time domain analysis okay what is the time domain analysis the time domain analysis will focus on the transient response of your uh, uh, dynamic system, the solution. Okay, transient response means the first few seconds, okay, where the uh, response will be changing with respect to time. Okay, the other type of analysis, which we're going to start in chapter 9, is called the uh, frequency domain analysis. Frequency domain analysis, we focus only on the steady state solution. We will talk about that, inshallah, when we reach uh, chapter 9. For today, we're going to start uh, the time domain analysis. Okay, before we start uh, analyzing dynamic systems, let's go through an overview. Okay, then we will go to the first order and second order systems uh, in detail. All right. All right. Now, so far, what we learned so far, the dynamic systems, the order of a dynamic system could be what? Could be first order or second order. Or nth order. Nth order means what? It's a combination of first and second order together. It will be higher order. But most of the systems that you see around either first order or second order system. Okay. That's why we're going to focus in this chapter on analyzing first order and second order systems. Okay. Now, you know how to find the order of the system. The order of the system can be easily uh, found from the denominator of the transfer function. Okay, or the order of the equation of motion. All right, mathematical modeling, how to model dynamic systems. Equation of motion, the equation of motion, remember it's the differential equ equation with respect to time. Okay, then we move to the transformation of the equation where they become algebraic equations. Then we move to the transfer function where we know what's the input and the output. It's also in the Laplace domain or the S, in the S domain. Why we use the transfer function for the block diagram, also for modeling and the block diagram. Okay, State space, this is the topic that we skipped in chapter 5. We don't want to talk about state space. Just for your information, this state space is another method other than Laplace transform used to uh, model dynamic system or, def or um, any um, system of equations. Okay. Uh, usually used for multi-input, multi-output uh, dynamic systems. So we skip that in uh, chapter 5 because we, we have a limited time in this uh, course. Okay. Solution. How to solve the dynamic systems. Okay. We uh, talked uh, briefly about the uh, solution that we use in, uh, in calculus or differential equation course called undetermined. But we focus on Laplace transformation. We focus on Laplace transform because uh, it's very useful for uh, transfer function and block diagrams and for the computer use in MATLAB, for example. All right. Transfer function approach after the Laplace transformation. The characteristic analysis. What is the characteristic analysis? We're going to talk about this more, inshallah, later in the analysis from the characteristic equation. How to know the characteristics of the solution, the transient response from the characteristic equation. State space, we skip that in chapter 5. It's another method used to solve dynamic systems. MATLAB and Simulink, how to use MATLAB and Simulink. This is part of the lab work, how to use it in the modeling dynamic systems. Okay, this is a quick review. All right, natural response and force response. What's the difference between natural response and force, forced response? Natural response is that this a system without external force. For example, if it's a mechanical system, it's a system without external force, like free vibration. Okay, only initial conditions for natural response. 
Force response, on the other hand, no, there is external force. There is a forcing function, okay? In addition to initial condition, if, if it's available, okay? We need to uh, uh, recognize this, okay? Transient response, steady state response. What's the meaning of a transient response and steady state response? Uh, this is very important. Uh, let me write it here. Tra uh, briefly, transient response. If you have a, a solution, for example, vibration under damped, okay, and uh, there is a uh, under damped response, okay, and then the response goes steady. This is what this is the time domain. This is what this is your function, for example, x of t, okay. So this is the, we call it the time response, okay? If you check the envelope, this is the envelope I'm drawing, okay? You see that there are two areas here, clear. Okay, there are two different areas with respect to time. This area, the amplitude will not change with time, okay? So we call this the steady state response. The amplitude will be fixed to when the time goes to infinity. This area, no, it's changing with time, as you can see. Decaying, changing with time. So we call this the transient response. Transient response. Okay, so now we know what's the transient response, what's the steady state response. In chapter eight, in chapter eight, we're gonna focus on this area only. How to draw this area, how to understand this area, what's going on in this area. Everything, we're gonna talk about it in chapter eight. In chapter nine, we're gonna focus on, on uh, on the steady state solution. We're gonna change the frequency of the input, okay? And see what will happen to the steady state solution. All right, we're gonna talk about this later in chapter nine. All right, so this is for chapter nine, this is for chapter. This is a very brief uh, description of what we are doing, okay? All right. Equivalent system, an analog, Analogy between system, we talked about that. We said that all dynamic systems, they may look different from outside, but once you model them, either first order, second order system, so there is always analogy between dynamic systems, similarity. Okay, it's very useful when we wanna solve a problem and you already have the solution from another problem, another system, okay. Linear system, nonlinear systems, Okay, we usually, when we solve any dynamic system, we linearize it easily, we linearize it with respect to, uh, we assume there is a small deviation around the steady state or the reference point, then we linearize it, okay? And we get the solution very accurate, okay? Time domain analysis, frequency domain analysis. This is chapter eight, we're gonna talk about the time domain analysis, which is, we focus on the transient response Frequency domain analysis, we focus on the steady state in chapter nine, okay? So this is a quick review of what we are going to do in chapter eight, inshallah, and also in chapter nine, all right? Now what we're gonna do next, what we're going to do next, we're gonna solve and see what is the transient response for a first order system, and then we move to the second order system. So we'll see you, inshallah, in the next video.